All right, so we're not really big on holidays or gifts here, but considering that you are building the kitchen and you're building the workshop down there, I thought I would get you a first aid kit. <laughs> I ordered this for like Christmas time and it came like three months late. Um, I love this piece. It's a vintage Japanese first aid kit. And I thought you would appreciate it too. I do. Yeah, you were you were kind of going with that like uh, raw wood look down in your workshop, which is yet to be revealed. So I saw this and I was like, ooh, this is kind of cool. Um, and then I really like putting together the first aid kits and stuff like that. I think that's gonna that's kind of my role here. It's like if you get hurt, here's what to do. So I filled this up to the brim, and I thought we'd uh, you know kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and show you all the things in here so you can kind of get a sense of um, what you have here. We were just talking about it this morning. Hopefully you won't have to use anything other than a Band-Aid <laughs> in here, but if uh, things happen, then uh, you'll be prepared. So let's go through. Um, first of all, Band-Aids are like right here because I do figure that that's probably going to be the thing that you use the most. Um, also right behind the band-aids are the isopropyl alcohol thing. So if you like get a cut, you clean it off first, hopefully, um, if you know that. And then uh, lots of other band-aids here. And then also there's something called bleed stop. So uh, you could use that if like you're really bleeding and it just keeps on gushing. Is that like a wipe? How do you, how does that work? It's a, it's a powder. So you, oh, it's a powder. yeah, you open it up and then you could put the powder on it and usually that kind of coagulates the blood a bit more. Now, if you are really gouging blood, this is a one-handed tourniquet. So basically you could rip this open and a tourniquet, the whole concept of it is that you wrap something around and you stop the flow of blood. Okay. So, you know, you never know if something like gets, you know, somebody gets, penetrated with a sharp object or whatever. One of our friends, Steve, was, he should have had probably one of these. He was, uh, I don't know what he was doing. I guess he was like using his saw in the woods. What was he using? He was using his like, um, he cut himself, remember, with the saw? Oh yeah, he cut himself in the leg. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it went, but he got a deep cut in his leg. Yeah. Okay, so then you're probably bleeding heavily, so you'll want to grab that and yeah, like wrap it around. Exactly. And, you know, people use this when they're hiking and stuff like that, like having it in the woods or whatever. It's a good thing. But, um, you know, I'm just thinking down there. This is also if you if you get a cut or something comes through your, your, the, your clothing and you want to get your clothing off really quickly, if, um, or if you want to cut something within your clothing, uh, you could use that. This is what these... I, are, I, I have two of these now, so I actually put one of these also in our... So um, those first are aid just kit. Extra beefy scissors. Be beefy scissors for for clothing. If you have okay. to cut something really quickly, instant cold pack. So if you need like an ice pack for something, something drops on your toe or hits you in the face, <laughs> and you need a little ice pack. And then kind of back here in this area, these are all wraps. So this is called Medipour, and this is actually a breathable wrap. So uh, that's helpful if you want your wound to breathe. This is a suture. So if you have like a cut that goes like this and you want to keep it together, there's a Band-Aid on one side and a Band-Aid on the other side, and this kind of pinches it. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, it's like a butterfly. Here's some more gauze bandages, stretch bandages. Here's like if you break a bone or something. That's kind of what typically people oh, use. Yeah. There's... Uh, you know, gloves back here. If you want to use the gloves. A tampon. You're probably like, what is this for? <laughs> but I, this is one of the things I picked up when I was, uh, not the tampon, but it's one of the tips that I picked up when I was doing a um, out of bounds kind of course where it's like, oh, survival in the woods type of thing. But tampons are really lightweight. And then if you do get a gouge, you know, it's one of those things where you could put put this into the gouge and it just fills up with blood, you know, immediately. If that makes sense. That's what tampons are actually <laughs> used for. So I thought I'd put that one in there. And then also the silver bandages that my 
uncle has patented and created, which is great for healing wounds. So I yeah, have- so the, the reason they put silver in it is so that it continues the electric field of your skin or something? Exactly. So, How does it work again? so silver is, first of all, it's antimicrobial. So a lot of metal is antimicrobial. You don't get microbes that are growing on like copper or silver, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then also, if you have a, a wound, your electrical field is, is broken. So my uncle always says it's like kind of building that bridge so that it helps wound healing more easily. Or if you even get like a muscle uh, pull, it's perfect for that. So I have that in here. Then back here is kind of more of the, um, you know, lifestyle stuff. So uh, lip repair butter. Um, if you have sore muscles, a little muscle rub right there, or if you have a, a burn or a scrape. Hard uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, sinus kind of tea, and then some, tea. yeah, emergency back here. Like I said, that's a little bit more lifestyle corner. Then um, I have cotton swabs and some of these that you also saw on the silver thing. So if you have uh, a wrap that you want to put around and if you get a splinter, which I think is something frequently we get oh, here, yes. there's the little needle in there. And if you want to make sure the needle's clean, little. What's that? Hold on, don't move it so fast. Oh, okay, this is a little lighter. So oftentimes, you know, if you want to just like quickly clean the needle, ah, okay. you could use isopropyl alcohol or sometimes use this to sanitize it. Yeah, so the needles are in there, because I often get splinters. One is in here. I, I'm not gonna give you all the needles, because I have some needles up here. And then just some Q-tips. So that's all right here next to the bandages. All right, moving on. So I already showed you the lighter in here. I don't even know where we got this. I think we found it on the land. So I just put it in here. Oh, eye washes. I think that's gonna be important in case like mm. you don't, even when you're wearing eye equipment, I sometimes get something in my, eyes so this would be an eye wash and yeah, i have just dust yeah smaller ones too so you could you know take this and even grab one put them in your pocket uh some nice tea tree and mint soap and so if you want to clean something out or wash your hands and then i have your knife that i had gotten you before now this is kind of like uh i need to fix my wound section right here so I have a germ shield. This has the antimicrobial wound gel with silver in it. Uh, I made this tincture. This is Hypericum. This is the actual color of it. It's like bright red. It's kind of cool. Uh, so this is in a clear bottle and it just is this color. Um, so this is St. John's wort and it says external burns and wounds. I put it on there. It's not something for you to drink. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a, it's not booch. Um, scalpels, little scalpels if you need to actually cut something out. Hopefully you won't ever have to do that, but there's two in here. And then I want to know uh, which one of these you prefer. These are spray-on bandages. They're like a second skin. So like mm -hmm. say you get something on your elbow or in your like elbow pit or on your knee or something. Things that move a lot. So you either paint it on or you spray it on. Which do you prefer? Probably spray. Okay. So that's good for an area if there's uh, you can't put a band aid. Exactly. On. Exactly. Or like maybe your ear. Or some, like right. something weird, you know. Uh, then I got manuka honey ointment and so. infection fighter. So if you get a cut and you prefer to use this, I know. You prefer the Porter's oh, Liniment it Sap. Smells, it smells funky. <laughs> it, it smells, smells good and bad. I know. It it's, smells, I'm not sure. If it I know. Bad. I think we like it. I think we like it because when you open it, has a strong smell. This is a drawing salve. This is a drawing salve that I had growing up as a kid and I'll, always really liked it. So I've, I've grown up with it. I think, you, I think you actually strangely like it. And then I have um, just hand cream just because your hands get pretty beat up down there. Uh, I know it's relatively warm in your area, but if you're kind of walking in and out um, and you just have like dry hands. And uh, tweezers. There's other things we could probably fit in here, but uh, I'm gonna take this and put this in the first aid kit up here. But I think this is kind of like the ultimate carpenter's first aid kit right here. 
<laughs> this is everything that I think you could think of. I mean, maybe there's something more, but. Yeah, I'll have to do some research if there's anything else you should keep in a wood shop. But yeah. I think that should get me started. Absolutely. I guess it's pretty straightforward how to use it. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's good to orient yourself to like what's in here because it's one thing if you made this yeah. yourself, I made this for you. So it's like. It's always good to just have one of these in every building anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Because even if there's someone like on the road that needs help or whatever, you can always grab oh, yeah. this thing and then. Well, think about it. Like, cause if you had a, if you, something really happened or you got something in your eye and you couldn't like see, you want to have that down there. I mean, you have to drive a thousand feet up, like to here to, to rummage into this. No, like you have it in your, your workshop where you need it. And yeah, like you said, if some, somebody falls on the road or something outside, you could run and say, Hey, let me get the isopropyl alcohol. Oh, this was, this is also hydrogen peroxide spray. I, I didn't think I showed you that oh, one. So that goes on there. That's Before an, you put a bandit on. Yeah, like usually you want to clean it up with isopropyl alcohol, sanitize the area. Um, you could put hydrogen peroxide on it and that's kind of, it kind of bubbles up a little bit. And then once the wound is clean, you never like really throw something on a dirty wound. Clean the wound off first, then you go and uh, put something like one of these guys on it and then you could wrap it or put a band-aid on it or anything along those lines. I did have a heat pack in here, but I think I took it out because I was like, eh, I don't know, heat pack I don't feel as, as necessary. That's when you like get a, a, like you pulled a muscle or something like that. This is more of like, oh, I dropped something on my toe or I bumped my shin or something dropped on my head or something like that. So um, you wouldn't put heat on that, you'd put ice. But yeah, so that's that's it. This is it. I think uh, I love the box. I think this is going to look really great in your shop too. It's going to be really fitting. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.